then the, the disappointment, the, the heartache of getting that phone call or seeing it on the news, which happened to a lot of individuals. It, there was no way to communicate prior to, to the parents, hey, they knew their, their sons were on the plane. And you think about how difficult uh, losing a child, even uh, an adult child, in those circumstances. I think that should always be considered. The craft went down yesterday afternoon near Loveland Basin, about 55 miles west of Denver. The charter plane was one of two carrying the Wichita State football team to Utah. 29 persons, including the coach and the school's athletic director, died in the crash. 11 persons survived. They are being treated in two Denver hospitals. Survivor Keith Morrison describes his injuries and tells how he reached uh, My name is Rick Stevens. Uh, I was one of the survivors of the Wichita State plane crash in October of 1970. After high school, I uh, attended Pratt Junior College uh, on a football scholarship. If you can call it a scholarship, it, it didn't pay everything. But we had a very successful season, met a lot of uh, good, solid kids from back east that uh, came out to play football from there. The next year, I went to University of Oklahoma on a football scholarship. Uh, and I found out that uh, Oklahoma is a lot more serious about playing football than, than I was. Uh, I transferred to Wichita State in 1968 and uh, started practicing with the team in the spring of six, or the, yeah, the spring of 69. And uh, actually played in the first game um, when, after Cessna Stadium was renovated in 1969, where we had one of our two uh, victories that year beat Utah State, which ironically was the team we were going to play in 1970 when the plane crash occurred. Uh, first thing I remember is a beautiful day here in Wichita when we left, uh, blue sky, chilly. Went out to the airport and boarded the plane. I was on the gold plane, the starters were on the first team. We're on the, the gold plane. Uh, the other players were on the second team uh, plane, the black plane. And a pretty uneventful flight. Of course, we were flying in this Martin 404, which was a World War II era airplane. And I went to the cockpit, um, which was we did on, on frequently. They invited us to come in the cockpit, watch them observe. And as I approached the cockpit, I, as I looked through the windows, which are small, all I could see was green. And they had topographical maps out, and I could tell pretty quickly that there was a significant concern on their part about where we were going to go. And then I heard, I think it was Skipper, Ron Skipper, one of the pilots, say uh, to the other pilot, pointed off in a direction and said, Hi, how high is that mountain? He said, it's 14 something, we can't make that. And uh, at that point, I, I realized we were in pretty dire straits. And I turned to go back to the, the cabin area. I don't know why, other than to get away from the front. And um, as I did, the plane took a sharp bank one way or the other and I fell to the floor. The next thing I remember is the collision with trees, the impact of the wings and the trees. The next thing, the last thing that I was aware of before I was knocked unconscious. Next thing I know I'm outside the airplane, uh, in front of the airplane. Uh, how I got there I have no idea. But it's a uh, Looking back, it, it, there was just uh, absolute confusion as to how I had gotten there, what had happened. It was difficult to process everything, except I remember spitting out several of my teeth and uh, 
cleaning the dirt out of my mouth and so forth. Miraculously, they were working on the Eisenhower Tunnel at the time. And they, for, to get from one side to another, they often drove over the top and came down. And there was a construction um, crew coming over the top. And they, they saw the plane crash and immediately came down. A twin-engine plane believed to be carrying 37 members of the Whit Afternoon near Loveland Basin Ski Area. Twelve persons are believed to have survived the tragic crash. This film was shot about an hour and a half after the plane went down. The explosion which followed the crash set off a small forest fire. The plane smoldered for several hours, an eyewitnessing up. Rescue crews arrived on the scene within minutes of the crash. Ten survivors walked away from the plane. Two were carried out. The march east of the... But they were, they were very brave. Uh, to me, they were, they were heroes uh, to come down, not knowing the state of the airplane when it might burst into flames and explode. But, uh, well, I would believe they, uh, They saved my life, and uh, so here I am. And you had no warning from anyone on board that there was a problem? No, there was, you know, there was a dip in the plane that kind of took our breath. The surviving players returned to a stunned community. Classes were canceled Monday, and the football stadium became the site of a memorial service. The Shocker football team decided to continue the season, returning to the field just two weeks after the crash. I think that it's important um, for the university to always recognize and commemorate what happened. It, is, uh, it doesn't define the university and it doesn't define Wichita. It was a, it was a tragic event that given maybe more supervision and more um, oversight could have been avoided. But it is a part of the university's history. I, I just hope that people will take a bit of time to think about what those individuals who were lost would have contributed to the world around them because it's hard to put your finger on saying, well, this is missing because they're not here. That We can only speculate that they would have done good things and continue to do the, the adults as well, the, the fans, the boosters, the coaches. Um, I just believe that it's, it's, a, it's a small part of the history of the university that ought to always be remembered, not focused on. And uh, but, but at this time of the year, you cannot help but reflect back and, and remember those who were lost. But my connection primarily, of course, was with the team, my teammates. You move on as you must, not as you wish. And I, you certainly any number of events leading up to the accident that could have been avoided had we taken a better airplane, had we had more competent pilots, had we taken a different route, had the plane, uh, any number of things that could have prevented it that didn't happen. But as for me, I've been, uh, I've been extremely fortunate in my life.